black tree lichen uh, the genus name is Briorea and uh, it's really abundant in this region uh, north central Washington and um, here it likes to grow mainly at higher elevations uh, around 4,000 feet is where I've seen it the most uh, we're about at 23 here and it grows a tiny little bit like you can see on this tree uh, but higher up it can grow into huge bunches like it would be huge bales of it uh, dangling from branches and it also has its preferences in terms of the trees that it grows on uh, and this is a dog fir and you know it likes it okay obviously it grows on it but a tiny little bit uh, but many higher up in altitude it really likes the larches and uh, the larches are conifers but they lose their needles uh, during the winter just like uh, deciduous trees and so you know that's where they grow the most in large bells on the branches it's high up in altitude and they prefer the larches up there uh, but Brioria was considered um, starvation food by the natives here and um, it's not that it tasted bad so bad that they would only eat it if they starved um, but I've heard some people say that mainly it grows year-round and can be harvested from the trees year-round and so when other food would run out um, then the Brioria would still be there to be eaten at any time and the thing is that it needs to be prepared in a certain way uh, to be able to be edible to us and so the first step, of course, is to pick it off the tree, and it actually comes off pretty easily. Uh, the thing that you have to be careful of, though, is that there's also wolf lichen. That's another kind of lichen that's bright yellow, that also grows, and it can grow attached together. And the wolf lichen is a great dye, if you want to dye something yellow, uh, but it's also uh, toxic and so you don't want to eat that and so when you grab the black tree lichen you want to make sure that it's not mixed in with uh, the wolf lichen and also you want to clean it out from all the little branches that may come from it you know just treat it like you would any other food uh, make sure that it's clean and that there's nothing in there either um, but talking about the yellow lichen sometimes in the spring slash summer um, there are some yellow dots on top of the lichen and that's not the wolf lichen uh, that's the way that uh, this lichen reproduces I think and um, so there's like a bunch of yellow dots all over the lichen and that's okay to eat it's not dangerous but the uh, wolf lichen which is a completely different kind you know has to be taken out and then when you've harvested a whole bunch of that it doesn't take very long you know if you pick from trees that have huge bales of it on top um, then when you've picked it it needs to be uh, soaked and rinsed off with the really bitter compounds that are in there um, and so you know what I've done in the past is that I collect a whole bunch of it gonna cram it into a five gallon bucket and then pour some water some uh, cold water on top of that and just let it soak for a while and then kind of wash it rub it uh, ring it and you'll see that this kind of yellowish brown substance comes out of it and uh, when the water gets too dark you know you pour that water out and then pour some more water in and um, I found that generally it takes three to four um, changes of water for all this stuff to come out and so that's what you want you process it washing it uh, until you know pretty much all the dark waters or the dark substances comes out of it and then when you're done with that um, you still need to cook it for a very long time and one way if you're a modern person right now if you want to try Brioria is that you can put it on your in your crock pot for about you know 24 to 48 hours on low um, just cover it with a tiny bit of water and make sure that it doesn't burn but if you cook it like that uh, then it will become edible uh, the natives of course didn't have modern crock pots um, but they still cooked the brioria for a long time and for that they just dug pits into the ground and lined it with rocks and built a hot fire on top of it it would heat up the rocks and then they would throw a whole bunch of green material with a lot of moisture in it um, then they would put all the brioria there they would cover with more materials 
then it would cover with the ground to make it uh, airtight. Sometimes it would add a little water to it, depending on the climate. Uh, and then it would leave it on the ground uh, to steam for 24 to 48 hours as well. And then what comes out is not necessarily very appetizing to the eye, uh, is that you're going to get this fibrous goo out of it. Um, and if you want to store it, you can actually dry it. Uh, and it dries kind of like um, those cereals, um, the shredded wheat cereals, kind of what it looks like, you know, when they dry. And you can just keep them like that for a long time. And then when you want to cook them again, you just need to throw them in your stew. And again, it's not necessarily the most appealing food to eat because even when it's, you know, reconstituted, it looks, it's very fibrous. It's all like eating hair, um, though it's edible hair, so it's not that bad. Um, and it doesn't taste bad at all. It's actually fairly decent. Uh, it's very filling, like if you want to thicken your stews and stuff, uh, it's, it's good. I've eaten quite a bit of it. And... Um, so yeah, so besides the kind of visible aspect of it, that's not really nice. It's a very abundant food, so food source, um, and the natives ate a lot of it, and it was major trading items. Um, and there's actually a lot of stories based on it, how it came to be um, that it used to be coyote's hair, and coyote, you know, left his hair in the tree for the people. Um, and there's a whole bunch of native secrets like that. Um, just people would be sent as scout to bring the lichen back to the grandmothers and the grandmothers would decide whether you know it was sweet enough or good enough to be eaten uh, depending on the tree, the alt altitude and the time of year. So there's one more thing I'm going to show you is that here it's pretty easy to pick it when it's at arm's length but of course you run out of that pretty quick and you, of course the lichen likes to grow high up in the tree and so what you can do that you can pick you can have a long stick like this and then you can reach up into the tree I'm just gonna reach up for this small one but obviously you can reach up much higher and then you can uh, twirl it like you would twirl cotton candy if you've ever done that this guy is not gonna work of course this one so there you go just gonna roll it like that and then you pull it with a good pull and then at the end of your stick you just need to uncurl all the black tree lichen and you have to remove you know the other dead stuff dead branches the yellow speck of um, the wolf lichen and so really harvesting it is really easy and doesn't take much time but Cleaning it is what takes the longest. That's pretty much what you do, you know. And then you can put it in your basket and then try to reach out for some more lichen of the tree with your stick. Mm -hmm.